morning, everyone. And my name is Yong Da, and I'm currently working as a research assistant professor with Professor Shenming Shi at Washington State University. And today, my talk is short term predictions of expert payment routing using deep learning models. It's a part of work included in a project co founded by Idaho Department of Transportation and the National Center for Transportation Infrastructure Durability and Life Extension. And today, I will briefly introduce the work objectives of this project and the review of predictive models for asphalt payment performance and the limitation of traditional machine learning models and the two deep learning models we used in this project and finally the conclusions. Okay, the first objective of this study is to identify the appropriate model types to use in the payment performance curves according to the historical data types. As we know, we have many types of predict predictive models for the um, as far payment performance. So we have to select the appropriate one for the data we have. And the second objective is to identify the gaps between the idea and the real conditions of the payment performance development. That's the main reason we choose different types of models for the data we have. And the third objective is to develop, calibrate, and validate distress specific models for forecasting future payment conditions for both new and rehabilitated payments. So, in the real project, we have new and rehabilitated payments. So, we have to use different model types to predict the performance of them. And uh, uh, since it's a project funded by the Department of Transportation, so we have to apply the deep learning models as payment engineers instead of the computer scientists. Okay, so this table shows the review of predictive models. There are three major types of predictive models. The empirical models, which are basically the regression functions collecting the payment performance and conditions. And uh, it's the advantage is its simplicity and the ease of implementation. But it currently it has low, low accuracy. And the second type is mechan mechanical models. Mm, basically, we have many material and structural fracture and fatigue models. So uh, they have solid foundations, but in, they are typically very complicated and time consuming, especially for the asphalt payment, which are time and uh, temperature dependent. And the third one is the machine learning models. They are basically data driven models. Uh, such as the networks, decision trees, connecting the payment performance and these conditions. And typically they have very high accuracies and with the increase of the model complexity, it has implicit form. So um, we have risk uh, of instability of models. And uh, with the model de development, we have some model compilations. Uh, for example, for the very popular mechanistic empirical models, we combine the mechanical models and the empirical models we introduce the material and failure criteria or payment responses into the empirical model. So we increase the complexity and accuracy of the empirical models. Another model compilation is the traditional machine learning models. Uh, we can just change the model structure or model calibration algorithms. So for the machine learning models with very, very shallow structures, we have implicit model forms as empirical models, but we have some advanced model calibration algorithms, so we have very high accuracy compared with the empirical model. Okay, this, uh, this plot shows the relationships between the artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, ML, and deep learning, DL. Um, artificial intelligence is a very broad concept. It's the ability of a machine to imitate intelligence of human behavior. So in addition to the models such as the neural networks simulate the uh, a neural system of mm, humans. Um, we also have some uh, algorithms such as the swarm, uh, swarm optimization algorithms. They are also uh, included in the artificial intelligence. And uh, the machine learning is an applica application of AI that allows a system to automatically learn and improve from experience. Uh, for example, for the neural networks, we train the models. So the model will compare the real data and the predicted data and the, the back propagation scheme will learn and improve from the experience. And for the deep learning, it's, a, it's the application of machine learning that uses complex algorithms and the deep neural nets to train a model. So basically different from the traditional machine learning, deep learning models have very um, complicated uh, model structures or algorithms. And this plot shows the types of different types of predictive models for predicting traffic speed. So we can see, in addition to the model based method, we have some classical data driven models, such as the ARIMA model for time series prediction and uh, 
traditional machine learning models such as the neural networks, Markov models, and uh, we also have uh, deep learning models such as the uh, deep neural networks, uh, convolutional neural network, and uh, recurrent neural network. Um, this, uh, this, uh, this slide showed uh, ar architecture of a feed for the neural networks. So it's a very simple model structures with just one hidden layer. And the input layer and output layer are determined by the problem itself. So if we just use one hidden layer, we can see the structure is pretty simple and uh, it has uh, explicit form as uh, empirical models. And uh, this slide shows how we calibrate the um, empirical and the traditional neural network, uh, sorry, traditional machine learning models. And basically we have input in affecting the payment performance. We have traffic climate material and the structure properties and the, as the X axis information. And we input this information into the payment response models and then we get predicted performance payment performance as the y-axis. And uh, we compile the predicted and measure the payment performance and uh, to calibrate the model. So that's the basic theme to train empirical, mechan uh, mechanistical empirical and uh, traditional machine learning models. And uh, traditional machine learning models can achieve better prediction accuracy than regression models and ME models. This is the result we uh, had in this project and we compiled uh, uh, artificial neural networks calibrated by the particle swarm optimization and the uh, models uh, constructed by the gene expression programming and we compile the performance of these two traditional machine learning models with the MAPDG national and the locally calibrated models and we can see the traditional machine learning models had better accuracy and similar to regression models and ME models, the traditional ma machine learning models constructed in most studies build a relationship between the measured distresses and the contributing factors, uh, just as I um, explained in the previous slides. Mm, okay, so this is the data managed by the ad hoc DLT for distress prediction. So we'll see what real data look like in the management system. Okay, so the differences between the data in the payment MED and the Idaho payment management system is that the first uh, difference is they have no material and structure information in the IDT PMS. So we will lose a lot of uh, useful information to build the uh, traditional machine learning models. And the second one is that uh, they have maintenance effect in the distress development in the IDT PMS. So we typically, we cannot see the payment performance curve like this. Sometimes we will collect data like, like this one. Uh, we can see they're very different. And uh, the occurrence of the maintenance result in several differences in the, uh, between these two plots. The first one is that we have changes in the material, uh, payment materials and structures. So we can see uh, partition, uh, partitioned by those yeah. red, circles and uh, the payment material and the structures will be very different because of the maintenance strategies. And the second one is there may be possible residual damage in the payment. And in the plot uh, at, uh, at left, we can see the payment distress development from the zero point. So that's the, that's the characteristics in the newly constructed payment. But when we finish the um, maintenance strategies, sometimes we have residual damage in the payment, so we cannot start from the zero. And uh, the most uh, serious one is that uh, time continuity in, in the right uh, plot because of the maintenance uh, strategies, so the time is not continuous. Okay, so for this project, we just select uh, uh, State Highway 41 from the state of Idaho to do the analysis. And uh, the first uh, um, uh, step is to do the data collection and the pre-processing. So we download the data and uh, plot uh, the development curve like this. Okay, so let's refresh. <coughs> so in this project, uh, we cannot use time or accumulated condition factors as independent, independent uh, variables because of the discontinuity in time. Instead, we have to use the characteristics of the development curve itself as the input. So it basically is transferred from uh, uh, is transferred to a time series prediction problems. 
And uh, for the data quantity, we cannot use large data from different payments for training because they don't have material and structural information. So we have to use the recent record of the target section for the training. So we have to use its own history, uh, historical data to do the presentation for itself. So that's the reason we choose two deep learning models, CNN and LSTM in this project. Uh, okay, uh, I will skip the introduction of these two um, deep learning models because we, you can find some very useful, uh, a lot of information online or in the textbook or journal or conference papers. Um, I just want to mention that the CNN model is uh, basically uh, is very widely used in processing the image in image information, but we can also use CNN to, <clears throat> to deal with time series problems. We can see it just treat the time, uh, the time series as the image information and uh, do the prediction. And the uh, second one is the long short-term memories. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, it's another deep learning models. Okay, so we will use the two deep learning models as a uh, as in the industry instead of the computer scientists. So we have to find the model architecture based on the data characteristics. And we have to determine model hyperparameters for corresponding deep learning models. Basically, we cannot leave this work for, uh, to the uh, Department of Transportation Engineers to do the hyperparameter de determination. And the, sec uh, the third one is we have to recommend some strategies to improve the model performance in case they have yeah, different conditions. Okay, so this is the step one. We process the training, uh, sorry, we process the raw data. And we just uh, uh, find the, uh, we just find the data, the series of different lengths and uh, we can just transport the series into the data set, uh, the training data set and validation data set and to do the model training and the prediction. And uh, this is the hyperparameter determination we you know, conducted in this project for different hyperparameters and the different input types. And uh, this is the model construction we conducted in this project. So we can see, so the, the most, most important one we can find from this uh, plot is that the more data you included in the model, the higher accuracy will, you will achieve. So that's, yeah, that's the most important findings. Okay, so we were also compared with uh, classical time series models, the exponential smoothing model and the autoregressive interpreted moving average model. So these are two very classical time series models. And we were also compared with these two models. And we can see these two models have the advantages of explicit form. So we have we don't have to check its stability. Um, but its accuracy is not as, uh, as high as deep learning models. Okay, so uh, we also provided three strategies to increase the model performance. The first one is to increase the input length. For example, if we have three uh, data points that to do the prediction, we can just add some inter interpolations between the um, collected data and uh, to, do the, to do the model construction and the prediction. We can see with more data in the, in the model, we have higher model accuracy for the prediction. And the second strategy is increase the input dimensionality. If we, uh, if we can collect more payment information such as the material, uh, structure, traffic, and the environment, we can include them in the model construction to transfer the univariate time series problem to the multivariate time series problem. So that's the, that's the input dimensionality increase. So with more information, we can get higher model performance. And the third one, I think, uh, I think that's the increased uh, model complexity. So we increase the uh, complexity of the model structure and the algorithms of the model. So we use the CNN and STM. We combine these two models to uh, to a uh, new uh, sorry to uh, more complicated models and do the predictions. We can see we also get some improvement in the model performance. Okay, so the summary of this study is that uh, first uh, we recommend model hyperparameters for the model use, and uh, we also find the model performance of deep learning model is better than traditional statistic models, and we also check the model accuracy and the stability. Okay, so this uh, okay, so this is okay. So what is the payment performance curve in this? Uh, project and uh, in this work is a series of development curves of individual distresses. And uh, 
performance curve is nonlinear with time like this, and it's partitioned by the maintenance and the rehabilitation action like this, and uh, it works so dependent on many payment information like this. Okay, so there are different uh, modeling techniques. So for the IDT PMS method, if we have these two historical data and we want to do the prediction and uh, they just uh, yeah do a linear curve. So it's basically against the, the nonlinearity of the development curve. And for the traditional machine learning models, we have these two historical data. We just measure the accumulated traffic and the environmental factors and do the prediction, uh, sorry, and match them with the measured the accum accumulated distress. And for a new, conditions we do the prediction. But for the deep learning models, we have this historical, historical data and uh, we made this prediction based on the historical data itself. It's not necessary to be linear, quadratic or any other polynomial, but the complicated model structures, the more historical data it includes, the more precise the prediction will be. Okay, so for the four work objectives, I think we provided a different model types for different data types. And uh, we identify the gaps between idea and the real conditions of the payment performance de development. We just treated them as individual time series to be modeled and predicted. And uh, we just uh, develop, calibrate and validate models for new and rehabilitated payment. For new payment, we can use traditional machine learning models because of the continuity in time. But for the rehabilitated payment, we have to use deep learning models and treat them as time series. Okay, so this, uh, okay, this is the object for, we provided some strategies to improve the model performance and uh, we, kept, uh, we provided the recommended hyperparameters. Okay, so this is the chart flow. So we're mining the historical data. We just uh, find the data characteristics. If we have information, enough information and no maintenance effect, we can just uh, build traditional machine learning models. But if we don't have that much information, we can just uh, try the deep learning models. Okay, that's, uh, that's it. Okay, thank you, Dr. Any questions from the audience? Yeah, thanks. Uh, very interesting presentation and uh, great topic. Uh, first of all, I want to say I'm not defending Kate in any, in any way. Um, but are you, uh, I, I do have a question that I think the comparison with Kate in any is a little bit apples and oranges. For testing uh, your model on the same data set that you're creating, right? I mean, splitting the data, maybe 80% for training, 20% for like that, that you're testing on that. Yeah, it, that's uh, that's a deep, uh, that's a very uh, it's very different from the traditional model calibration uh, procedures because we have limited data, so we have to use. Okay, we have one series. We have uh, we just uh, use the previous several points for the data training and uh, the last data point to do the data validation. We don't have. Uh, we cannot use model constructed by. Uh, constructed constructed by the data of other payment section to to pre, for the prediction of other payments. We have to use this own prediction uh, historical data to do the model training and the prediction. Yeah. So I guess I guess at the beginning you said well in comparison to Kinetic, for example, but Kinetic doesn't have the advantage of having any of that. Yes. There, right? It's just structural design, so nothing that happens with the construction and material quality and all that. That's considered in your model. Yeah, uh, because uh, the most uh, the the reason why we cannot use the uh, um, ME model is that we don't have enough material and uh, structure uh, information, so we cannot transfer. Uh, sorry, we cannot just build a model of all the payment types and uh, use that constructor model to do the prediction. Yeah, because if we include uh, the payment information in the ME models, we can. Yeah, if we Based some new payment sections, we can do the prediction very accurately. But if we don't have enough payment information, when you face a new payment sections that that is not included in the database for the model training, you cannot do a very accurate prediction. I think that's the main reason. Yeah, yeah. It's basically this model is limited to this database, right? That's yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Any other questions from uh, outside audience? Okay. We have a question from Dr. Uh, Digital uh, online, very interesting study, Dr. Zhang. 
Could you comment on how you how you set up of one PC and accuracy? So how your setup of the one PC and then affect your model accuracy? Okay, so so in this project, I think the most uh, concerning um, uh, the problem is the the limit uh, the data quantity of the uh, data quantity to do the model training. So I think uh, I think that's an, I, I don't know if that answers the questions because they are. Okay, so uh, what's the comment? Yeah, I Okay, thank you. Thank you.